Hello guys, in this video we'll learn about channels in Rust. The purpose of this video is to serve as one stop for literally everything that you want to know or you should know about channels in Rust from beginner to advanced. So make sure you stick around watch till the end and as we start there's a link to my discord in description so make sure you join it. Before we dive into channels, first let's try to understand why do we even need channels. Because as we have discussed previously on my channel, we are well served with the concurrency toolkit in Rust. We have atomic reference counting to share the ownership across threads and then we have mutex for you know locking and stuff. We have retried logs, we have atomic types and in a recent video we also discussed lock free data structures. So why do we even need channels? Let's take this very basic example. We have a vector wrapped in mutex for locking and arc to share the ownership across multiple threads. And we have a producer thread that produces this data and then in the main thread we are trying to receive the data and printing it pretty straightforward nothing fancy now let's run this and try to observe the behavior boom nothing is printed but wait we have a producer that is producing the data why is there no data received just pause here and try to understand so the problem here is classical race condition. By the time child thread produced the data, main thread has already finished the execution. So there is no data synchronization and hence we lose out on the result or uh, the data received. So what we can do is either we can introduce some uh, delay here or we can wait by introducing join. And now if we try to run this, Boom, there you go, we see the data. Now we already discussed race condition, let's talk about that locks that can also occur. So here we have two messages and we have two threads, T1 and T2. What we try to do is, first of all in T1, locking message one, and then got lock on message one, and then uh, shows you the message one. Then to simulate some task, we are you know sleeping for uh, 100 milliseconds, same is the case in T2. And then in T1 trying to lock message 2 because we want to read now message 2 and here T2 trying to lock message 1. So finally we should see got lock on message 1 and this should got lock, get lock on message 2. Pretty straightforward nothing fancy here just we are trying to see what happens uh, you know when we not want to use channels before we even introduce the channels what issues what problems can we run into. So let's try to run this. Boom. The program is stuck here because we have encountered a deadlock. So what happens is T1 first locks M1 and as you can see locking message 1 got lock on message 1 and prints the message 1 right here and then goes ahead and does some task. Similarly what happens is T2 here lock on message 2 as you can see third line and then got lock on message 2 boom. Now both are trying to lock something which is already acquired by the other thread so t1 here is trying to lock message 2 which is hold here by t2 and t2 is trying to lock message 1 which is hold by t1 right here so what happens is since the lock has not been dropped since this thread is still executing and this thread is also executing so we are not able to pass the data and we are stuck here now how, how can we solve this either we you know finish this or what we can do is we can drop so we can just drop uh, lock one and similarly right here we can drop lock two and let's write it and now if we try to run this Boom, it works completely fine and as expected, we are able to you know get everything and the program exited successfully. So basically, we have to introduce these explicit handlings to you know work uh, with threads and this is because there are only two threads and the behavior is a bit deterministic but when dealing with the task which could take dynamic amount of time and stuff, it's very complicated to handle. Then comes lock free data structures that we discussed in a previous video. Okay, if we have lock free data structures, why do we even need channels? Let's talk about a bit on that, then dive into the channels. So example remains the same, but let's try to understand with lock free data structures that we just discussed in a previous video on my channel should be popping somewhere on right top. If you haven't checked it out, 
make sure to click it watch it before moving on to this one to better understand this example so instead of mute tags and you know those locks and stuff now we have moved to a lock free data structure we have a set queue and what we do is share the queue across thread the example completely remains the same since we don't acquire locks and stuff in this so bit of print statements i've removed other than that the simulation of task the message and everything remains as it is let's see what happens when we try to run this again t1 and t2 we have we share just like we shared messages we shared uh, the atomic reference uh, to uh, these queues our lock free queues to our threads and we just try to push and pop some messages here and there so let's run this boom there you go we are able to successfully run our uh, problems that we are encountering of races and dot locks and stuff with lock free data structure but point to notice here is once you use lock free data structures yes you may get away from you know those uh, deadlocks and stuff but the problem here is the message you produce can be consumed by anyone it doesn't follow any uh, producer and subscriber or consumer model here which is true with channels which we'll see in a minute but lock free data structures in state can you know push and pop some data which can be consumed by literally anyone while channels have a better control on who can consume and who can publish and again we have to join here our threads and manually block the operation until the lock free data structures have consumed the data or the threads have finished the execution so now let's try to dive into channels with basic examples and we solve all of these problems that we run into by now i hope you guys already know why do we even need channels so let's talk about channels a rust channel is a thread safe message passing mechanism for sending data between threads or asynchronous tasks so here we have a pretty straightforward example exactly similar to the first example that we just discussed with arc and mutex where without blocking we were not able to consume our data successfully same here we have a producer thread sending the data and we have a consumer thread which is trying to consume the data and we are using sync or bounded channel which with a fixed size so here the size is two and we have a sender and a receiver sender or producer is producing the data and consumer is consuming our data so let's try to run and see what happens boom received hello from thread and then the program ends now what happens here we are not using any explicit join and stuff in state whenever the data is ready the thread can go ahead and just publish it and the receiver would be blocking or waiting for the data to be there so uh, you know it can accordingly print it or send it or process it and then the program executes so we don't need any explicit uh, joins and stuff here boom the race condition solves so let's extend our example a bit and we try to understand the limitations uh, that we can encounter with sync channels now synchronous channel or uh, bounded channel here has a capacity as we define as two and our thread instead of producing a single message now is producing three messages one two and three and then we simulate some task here and then we have a receiver which is trying to receive uh, the messages so let's try to understand what happens when we run this so here sent message one sent message two and then we receive our messages one and two and then only the third message can be added so what happens here is it's it's blocked the execution in the thread until uh, the the messages which are previously in your buffer in your uh, in your channel which are not consumed are consumed only then the new messages are sent or pushed by now i hope you guys should have got this thought in your mind when will i be using sync channels then if sync channels come with these limitations that by if you don't consume it you cannot produce more than your capacity so sync channels are pretty useful when you want to apply back pressure rate limiting and stuff ensuring producers wait if consumers is slow what do i mean by that let's take this example our producer is pretty fast and efficient in producing the messages but consumer is a bit, is a bit slow maybe consumer is doing too much stuff or you know lots of tasks and uh, operations are going on then what happens if producers keeps on producing but consumer is not consuming what happens is it basically grows your grows your memory a lot so to 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 utilize memory efficiently what you want to do is 
you want to keep a balance between producing and consuming and that's where Seng channel helps you so what happens here is this is preventing unbounded memory growth it's ideal for as i mentioned rate limiting or balancing producer consumer speeds so that's when sync channels are useful now let's see what is the alternate that we can use without you know this uh, capacity and to move to the alternate or solve this problem all we have to do is use channel here and let's try to run the same example just by removing the capacity stuff and using a channel so now we run this boom we produce and we have a two second sleep and then we immediately go ahead and consume so let's even try to remove this and now we do same we just produce and we consume as well so that's where uh, channel can help us with you know uh, con producing as much as you can and consuming whenever you are ready to consume now let's try to understand what does MPSE stands for. So MPSE is multi producer and single consumer. So we can have multiple producers, but we can only have a single consumer. Now here we have a couple of threads which are, so let's say this is producer one and producing a message. Then we have producer two producing a couple of messages and then we are receiving those messages. Pretty straightforward. Let's try to run this. So as you can see, producer two sent a message, one producer two, producer one, and then basically uh, your producer one also sends the message and man threads receives your messages and prints uh, basically that the messages are received. So that's what happens. But as you can see, the program has not exited. That's because we have to drop the original sender. But why do we need to drop the sender manually? Because we have created multiple clones of sender. So the receiver is expecting more messages. And once we have finished producing messages, we have to signal receiver that there are no more incoming messages. Otherwise the receiver will keep on waiting forever. So what we have to do here is drop TX. And now if I try to run this, boom, all of the messages produced and consumed and we are able to successfully end our program. So till now we know that what is MPSE, what is sync channel, channel, we are able to produce messages, consume messages, but as the name suggests, multi-producer, single consumer. So let's see what happens when we try to create a clone of our uh, consumer or our receiver. So as you can see, when I try to do clone here, there is no clone available. But when I try to clone our uh, producer or our uh, sender we are able to clone it but when I try to clone our receiver or uh, the consumer here there is no clone available so the limitation here is that we can only have a single consumer to all of the messages that are produced and that is with the standard library now the grass is not all green with channels obviously channels have their own limitations as well one of them that we just discussed which is single consumer limitation and then we have you know potential blocking or deadlocks that we just discussed with both what happens when your sync channel buffer is full consumer is not consuming the messages what happens is you encounter a kind of a deadlock similarly uh, when we just discussed when the receiver is waiting and you have multiple producer producers have though finished producing but you have to drop to signify that producer has stopped producing and receiver or your uh, consumer should also stop and obviously there are some features which are missing messages are strictly fifo like first in first out there is no way to prioritize or reorder the messages in the queue and uh, there are some other issues like uh, you know no message expiry or cancellation so let's say if i, I would want to build a queue uh, a, a sync channel where I, i'm signifying that if the message is not consuming within two minutes then just expire the message and let other messages get in but that's not possible to have with uh, the standard channels that we have uh, no expiry and cancellation so these are some of the uh, limitations or issues that you can say with channels now can we have multiple uh, producer and multiple uh, consumers as well let's see 
Now to solve that issue, just like for log-free data structures, we had to fall to crossbeam. Similarly, let's try to use crossbeam that helps us with multi-producer, multi-consumer. So here, same example, we have multiple threads that are producing our data or sending. And then we have multiple consumer threads, as you can see here, consumer two and consumer one. So if you want to go ahead with multi-consumer, multi-producer model, go ahead with uh, Crossbeam. Crossbeam provides uh, unbounded uh, channels that can help you create multiple producer and consumers based on your requirement. So let's try to run this. And boom, we have consumer two, consumer one. Basically, the prints can be here and there because we are using threads. But as you can see, we have consumer one and two. Both are able to consume your produced messages. And we are, you know, producing the messages here. And then we have consumers that are consuming the messages. By now, I hope you guys are very well aware of what are channels. But when to use which? We have discussed mutex in previous videos. We have talked about log free data structures. We have discussed channels. When should you or me as a developer should be using? So let's build a rule of thumb. We use mutex for simple exclusive resource access. We use log free data structures for high performance non blocking concurrency. And we use channels for safe message based thread communication. That's it. Mutex, exclusive resource access, log free for high performance non blocking concurrency, and channels for safe message based thread communication. If you have any other questions, comments, doubts, feel free to drop in the comments or you can also reach out to me on my Discord. I'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic. Until then, bye bye.